Alrighty guys, gals, non-binary pals, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about Stephanie Buttermore. Now before we get into the video, I want to make it very clear that while I will be doing commentary on recent videos that she has made, this video is not me trying to bully, not me trying to be mean, just me sharing my thoughts and hopefully trying to kind of help out the situation or at least share my point of view on things that have been happening. It is not a hit piece. It is nothing like that. I just wanted to make that very clear at the start of the video. Hello, it is Ad John here. I want to say a huge thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. If you're unfamiliar with what VPNs are, it stands for Virtual Private Network. One of the coolest things that they can do is they can actually change your IP address. Your IP address is basically the address to your computer, and if someone knows where your computer is, someone knows where you are. Along with being able to actually change your IP address, it actually allows you to access the streaming platforms that you're already paying for, but you can access them from any different country. Now, something that a lot of people People might not know is that if you are paying for a streaming platform here in America there might be some shows that you're not able to watch because it's not available there but you can change that IP address to somewhere completely different and be able to access those shows that you're already paying for I really like Nord because you can actually access it from six different devices from one account so you can use it on your phone you can use it on your desktop you can use it as your laptop whenever I go out to a coffee shop if I'm not trusting the Wi-Fi just pop it on and you're good to go. NordVPN also recently added a new free anti-malware feature. If any of that sounds interesting to you, feel free to click the link in the pinned comment down below as well as the description it should be on the screen as well to get 73% off for the next two years. Again, huge thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring the video. Check out those links. Let's get back into it. If you're one of the four people watching this video that don't know who Stephanie Buttermore is, let me give you a very quick synopsis of Stephanie. So Stephanie is a popular YouTuber, fitness Instagrammer, fitness influencer um, on all social media platforms. Uh, she was pretty popular. And then what really, I think, gained a lot of popularity for her was she would do these full day of eatings, but they were like full day of cheat meals. And they, she would eat insane amounts of food, insane amounts of calories, and she would stay relatively thin. And people thought that was really crazy. So that really kind of bolstered her YouTube and bolstered her in the algorithm. And then, so she was doing that for a while, but then about a, a couple years ago, she decided to do this thing called the all in journey. Now, what that was, was basically she was really struggling with food and her relationship with food when she was doing these cheat days. She was like claiming that she had an insatiable appetite. She was always hungry. She never felt like she was ever really full. And so in a, a big reason for that was she claimed that, you know, she, she wanted to stay thin. She wanted to stay uh, skinny. And so she was worried about eating too much. So she went all in. And what that was, was allowing herself to eat as much food as she wanted. She didn't really worry about it. And through that, she kind of documented that on her YouTube, which really blew up her channel like it it was insane it was everywhere on YouTube but through that it blew up her channel and she also gained some weight and she got some backlash she made a lot of videos kind of sharing her journey from you know kind of being more restrictive with her diet to going all in and that really you know gained her a lot of popularity and the past few months she's been kind of MIA from social media and people were kind of curious as to where she was and then she released this video now it's been about a month so this is kind of old news I guess but uh, she released this video titled my recent weight loss and fears about regaining weight explaining my mistakes kind of talking about where she is and this is the video that we are going to be focusing on today one of the biggest points she makes in this video is that she actually started losing weight after she went all in and at first she thought that that was a completely normal thing and that it was completely healthy and there was no issues because one of the biggest things they talk about is like the set point theory and she she went up in weight and then her body was like okay we we're no longer insatiably hunger hungry so now we are going to start losing weight because you you don't have that insatiable appetite and then naturally by eating less food you start losing weight and so that kind of happened and at first she was like this is great this is super normal awesome happy with it but then 
it kind of started going more and more and she was losing more and more weight. And because of that, people that were really like super stoked about her gaining this weight and doing this all in thing were all of a sudden being like, what the heck is going on? Now you're losing all of this weight. Was this all a lie? Like people were obviously being crappy because it's the internet. <laughs> I was convinced that my body was still trying to settle into its natural set weight. I was also under an illusion that I was doing super well, that at first I didn't notice I was losing so much weight, but I ended up losing more than beyond what I believe my set weight is and didn't do anything to stop it. She also dealt with quite a bit of criticism when she did do the all in, you know, people again, it's the internet being mean, being like, oh, you're gaining all this weight, you're just getting fat, you're just giving up kind of thing, right? And so when she lost the weight and people were congratulating her being like, oh, you, you went to the, you know, you got heavy and now you're losing the weight and you're proving everyone wrong and that made her feel really good. And so then she had this irrational fear, is what she says basically, of gaining the weight back after you know, losing it, doing the all in thing because of dealing with that outside criticism. It's no secret that I received very vocal, unsavory comments about my weight gain, which really made me scared to ever regain weight again. Another really big point of the video is she says the reason, one of the reasons that she lost a lot of the weight was she genuinely just didn't have much of an appetite and that's why she lost the weight. And it took me a few months to realize that I was tiptoeing in very dangerous territory. I think I was subconsciously restricting and blaming it on my lack of appetite. Of course, I wasn't lying about that. I genuinely never really felt that hungry, but I could have made more of an effort to just eat more and prevent that unnecessary weight loss. Now, this is where I struggle with I have this feeling that Stephanie, and I, I would assume that she would agree, I don't know, I'm not her, but I feel like she has an unhealthy relationship with food. And I'm not saying that in a mean way because I have an unhealthy relationship with food. I've talked about it many times in the past. Um, I have struggled with binge eating. That was something that I did for quite a few years, and it was something that was had such an insane hold on me, like I, I can't even explain it. Something that I believe is like, once you have a really messed up relationship with food, unhealthy relationship with food, ED, eating just whatever you want to call it, you will never have a normal relationship with food. I, I'm not saying that you'll always have a bad relationship with food. I'm not saying that you'll always have an ED, you'll always have an unhealthy relationship with food. But I believe that thinking that I just need to beat this thing and then I'll be quote unquote normal is dangerous and I just don't think that it's very realistic. I actually ended up tweeting about this after I watched this video and I wanna share that tweet with you. So what the tweet says is hot take maybe. <laughs> if you have struggled with an ED, eating disorder, I think it's near impossible to get to a point where you have a normal relationship with food. I do think it can improve over time, definitely, but expecting it to be normal is setting yourself up for failure and that end part is the thing that matters to me so much because I don't want people to fail and I don't want people to feel like they are failures. So if instead of just being like, I need to be normal, just think I need to improve my relationship with food slowly over time. And it's okay if I never feel like I'm quote unquote normal because Normal, what even is that, right? I think it's totally okay to understand that, yes, I have struggled really bad with my relationship with food. I had an ED, I had disordered eating, I had all of those things, whatever it might be. And while I'm not perfect, I am improving every single day. And it seems like Stephanie really struggles with that thought. It's either I'm struggling with food or I'm normal. It's okay to be like, I'll never be normal, but I can improve my relationship with food over time. This also goes into why I think it's so dangerous or there can be so many negatives of being a public figure in this realm. Fitness, weight loss, health, all of those things, right? Because so many people saw her journey and they attached themselves to her. So then you have this irrational, like, you feel like you owe it to the people that are following you to be perfect all the time. And if you feel like you can't be perfect, you just want to disappear. You don't want it to exist anymore, right? And so Stephanie stopped posting. And it's, it's this irrational, uh, like it's not normal. And I think 
when you put it out into the world, when you talk about it, people are like, why would you expect that? Like, we're here for you. We're, we're your fans. We, we want to support you. But when you are in the middle of it, you just feel like if I'm not the best version of myself, if I'm not doing everything correctly, no one is going to listen to what I have to say. And I think that is one of the biggest pitfalls that a lot of creators kind of fall into, especially in this space. Later in the video, Stephanie actually talks about, she, she asks her audience, what do you guys want me to do? Because I know a lot of you guys are sick of me talking about the all in stuff and, and like, should I just move on, blah, blah, blah. I want to get your input on what you would like to see from me. Many of you want me to stop talking about all in and I absolutely understand. I take no offense at all. I get it. It can be repetitive and tiresome to hear about. I can 100% move on from here and just talk about what I'm doing now. I can do daily vlogs, informative videos, do full days of eating. This is one of the things that, again, being a creator, it's a really interesting kind of dichotomy because I understand like wanting to ask the people that are watching your videos, what do you want me to do? But at the end of the day, and even if I read some of the comments, which were actually pretty nice, it's like, you got to do what you want to do. If you want to continue making these all in videos and it's something that it means something to you and you feel like you're getting something out of it, then you should continue to do that, right? If you no longer want to talk about it, if you're like over it and you just want to move on, then you should move on and do what you want to do. The reason this is hard for a lot of people is because a lot of times if YouTube is your job, you want to do the things that's going to get the views, right? And Stephanie actually, she gets, she does well on views. It's not like I'm saying like she just only does, gets views when she does all in. She gets views when pretty much whenever she does anything. But I will say like the all in videos absolutely blew up, right? So there is a lot of people that will want to see that content. So if she makes that content, people are probably going to watch. But again, like with anything on YouTube, no matter what you do, there is always going to be someone saying, oh my God, here's another all in video. And then on the flip side, I'm like, oh God, I'm so excited. This is the video I've been waiting for. So at the end of the day, you just have to do what you want to do. Towards the end of the video, this was really interesting to me. She kind of makes it a point to be like, I didn't have BED, binge eating disorder. I had orthorexia, which if you're unfamiliar with what orthorexia is, it's basically like just limiting yourself to quote unquote, really clean, healthy foods. Because if you eat anything that's not clean or healthy, you feel like you're gonna gain weight and it's like really scary for you, right? It's also really important to me that I talk to experts because I personally did not have anorexia or binge eating disorder, but was definitely orthorexic before All In. I had a very rigid bodybuilder type diet, so I think I would be a good interlocutor due to my past struggles. People might think that I binged on my cheat days, but I was always fully in control and just ate to satiety. I, I wonder if the reason she's so like wants to drive that home is maybe because she's been accused. I know that sounds kind of weird of having BED and she's like, I didn't have that. I think at the end of the day, it, it really doesn't matter. You know, like as far as trying to heal your relationship with food, if you have a messed up relationship with food, you have a messed up relationship with food. And I think at the end of the day, one of the biggest things that I've noticed is it seems like there's this really big want for there to be an end to this chapter, an end to these videos, an end to these things that she's going through. And I just don't think that that is how it works. And I'm not even saying that just for Stephanie, that like, honestly, this video is less for her. I, I doubt that she'll even watch it and more for other people that might be struggling with similar things because I am someone that has struggled with, you know, an ED and I am someone that I don't think I'll ever just be like, I no longer have any issues and everything is fine and I'm perfect, right? Is my relationship with food now better than it's ever been? Absolutely, and I believe that wholeheartedly, but do I think I have remnants of my past still stuck with me that will be with me probably forever? Yes, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Just like with a journey with losing weight and keeping it off, there's never an end. And it seems like that's what's really wanted here. There wants to, there, there's this end that needs to be there that's tied up with a bow and then it's like moving on to the next chapter. I don't think that this is how this works, right? It's not like a book, you move on to the next chapter and everything's good. It's like there is no end. This is something that will be something that 
she, the reason I'm saying she is because, you know, that's the video I'm talking about. But if you are someone that has struggled with similar things that you will be dealing with for the rest of your life. And I know that sounds really negative and scary and I don't mean it to be because it's not like it's going to be something that you're thinking about constantly. But I do think that being realistic with yourself and being like, okay, I have struggled. Like I had a, for whatever it might be, if you really struggled for a few years, maybe 10 years, whatever it was, right? That's real and that's something that is going to affect the rest of your life and being okay and understanding that that's not just gonna bloop end because you've decided that it's going to end i think that's a really smart way to go about it that's pretty much all i have to say about this video and again i hope i made it very clear this is not a video of me trying to attack anyone this is not a video of me doing anything like that i just wanted to share my thoughts because this is a subject that i am obviously very passionate about and it means a lot to me and i was you know, this was a video that was sent to me many times. I actually, it's interesting because I watched it a few days ago and at first I was like, ah, I don't really, I don't think that that's worth my time talking about. I don't know if I have much to say, but then for some reason it kind of like just kept playing in my head, playing in my head. And then I had a conversation with my girlfriend and I just had all these thoughts that I was like, I, I really need to talk about this. So, you know, I'm sorry if the thoughts are kind of all over the place. This is really just my raw thoughts and, and how I feel. Um, but again, those are just my thoughts. I would love to know what you have to say. If you want to leave a comment down in the comment section, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.